into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy, whether you like it or not. Okay, so if you're from the town, you might have a fair idea where I am. Over there, you can see Belurgan. Over there is the Soldier's Point. And over there is the Lord Limerick Embankment. So if you haven't heard of it, the Lord Limerick Embankment is a flood mitigation embankment which is keeping quite a sizeable portion of Dundalk Town above water. It was built in the 1720s by a man called James Hamilton, or the self-styled Lord Limerick, hence the name. He was also the first Earl of Clumbrassel. Okay, so to give you a little bit of context on who he was, his wife's step-niece's husband was the guy who was 50% responsible for writing the first official rules of cricket, if I'm remembering that correctly. Yes, okay, cricket, that is what we're dealing with here. But in fairness to him, Dundalk wouldn't be probably half the size it is now if it wasn't for this embankment that he built. But the interesting thing about the embankment is that since it was built in the 18th century, there basically hasn't been any work done on it whatsoever to maintain it or to fix it. As I said, it's keeping a large amount of Dundalk above water, so that's all of the Lower Point Road, all of Bay Estate, uh, the Red Barns Road, Clunenda, pretty much the whole way out to Black Rock. It's a huge amount of people living in this catchment area. And every time the tide rises, it comes further and further up, in through the holes in the embankment, into people's gardens in some cases. We're gonna have a look at that in a wee bit. But first of all, I'm gonna show you some of the aerial maps and drone footage and things like that to give you an idea of where this is. But to put it in context, it essentially runs from the Soldier's Point here at the bottom of the Navy Bank. It's actually 100 years older than the Navy Bank. And it runs the whole way to, if you're at the last bad bend before Black Rock, just out there on the Rock Road, and you look out to your left, you can see a tree sort of jutting out to the left. And the reason that this tree is jutting out and that the embankment doesn't actually go the whole way to Black Rock is because James Hamilton, the Lord Limerick, died before construction was finished. So if it had been extended just another 500 metres, you actually would have had an embankment running the whole way between Dundalk and Black Rock. Unfortunately, as I say, it's been completely neglected. There's been light on the horizon for it a few times when there was funding given to County Loud and that to carry out flood mitigation works. But so far, it has just been completely ignored. There are massive holes in it. Um, it can actually be quite dangerous walking along certain lengths of it. And we're gonna finish up shooting right here for now because the rain has just set in again, but we're gonna wait for that to pass, find another location and show you some more of this beautiful part of Dundalk. So I thought at this point you deserved a nice, clean, wind-free voiceover. Believe it or not, that was actually me using the new microphone which I purchased for the channel with the funds from the Buy Me A Coffee. Thanks again to all you who have supported the channel by donating there. It just happens to be the windiest place in the whole Dundalk town and would actually have been impossible to hear at all if it hadn't been for the gear upgrade. Anyway, I thought I'd show you the aerial photos of some of the potential entrances to the embankment on the Dundalk side if it were to be developed into a walkway and then joined to the Navi Bank, which is an idea that has been supported by politicians, engineers, planners and community groups, both past and present. Entrances 1 to 4 are all just existing entrances to the Navi Bank, from the back of the O'Mahony's pitch to the bottom of the Lower Point Road. Number 5 is the Kissing Gate in the far bottom corner of Waterview. Number 6 is at the bottom of the Shore Road and number 7 is facing Lismead. Beyond that, the walkway slash embankment could be brought up to any convenient point in Black Rock. We'd be united at last by a very long, very useful ditch. Ah. 
Okay, we've got another sunny spell. So I was just saying about the hopes for the funding, that there would be some maintenance and some upgrading carried out on the embankment. So as recently as last year, the Office of Public Works, the OPW, has set its sights on this area of Dundalk for flood mitigation works. Now, it sounds as though recently, as though perhaps the focus could end up being shifted more towards Black Rock kind of direction, or that there would be a new embankment built, which I think is a terrible pity because we have this fantastic facility. The view from down this part of the town is absolutely breathtaking. It's coastal and it feels rural all at once. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I did speak to a local politician recently who informed me that there is a consultancy firm coming down, presumably from the OPW, to carry out investigations and draw up some reports as to what they think would be best. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that they would take the initiative not only to raise the existing Lord Limerick embankment by two metres and to repair the holes that are currently in it, but also to take the initiative and widen the embankment and extend it that last little bit to Black Rock. So then we have a greenway slash walkway between Dundalk and Black Rock I think that makes a whole lot of sense. I don't know, tell me what you think in the comments. With talks of greenways being created further down the East Coast, we could join with them too, and we could have the East Coast Greenway. Why not? It would be amazing. And one of the reasons I would be so for maintaining the existing embankment is not only because, you know, it's already here, but also because it actually preserves quite an important and overlooked part of Dundalk's history. So it would be really nice to see those explored and, you know, on show for people visiting this part of the town in future. For example, you've got the remains of the Liverpool cargo hold, which is over where we were standing in the last shot near the Soldier's Point. The remains of it are thought to be around there somewhere, as far as I know. And that was essentially the baggage hold for people who were traveling to Liverpool from Dundalk, back when Dundalk was stricken by both famine and emigration. And here where we're standing, you've got the fluvial outflow gate for the Blackwater River, which in itself is a historic construction. And next we're going to take you for a little stroll over to another section of the embankment, further down the rock road, say, where the remains of one of the dog's fever huts is meant to be. <laughs> actually come that far. We've literally just crossed over to the other bank of the Blackwater. The embankment is running all here along in front of me and down to my left forming what essentially just looks like a massive big ditch with a load of bushes and trees up on top of it. But the reason we've come over here is because I want to show you that clump of trees down there or maybe one tree. Anyway that is where Dundalk's old fever hospital used to stand. Now the fever hospital was a response as far as we can make out to the Spanish flu sort of around 1920-21 I think and there had been descriptions of fever huts from the previous century which were a lot more rudimentary which only had a ditch for one wall and a woven movable wall of grass and gorse to form a movable partition to block out the wind from whichever direction it was coming. It was an attempt by people to help the afflicted, those who were struck by fever and cholera. However, it really must have felt for these people like they were coming here to die. Like that is, you can see that's a very isolated spot, quite far from any signs of civilization back then. Because this hospital was a much later construction, you can see the steel poles on which it was raised. The reason it was raised up so that air could circulate not only around it, through it, inside it, but also underneath it and up through it. With fever huts the previous century, germ theory hadn't quite been established and so it was believed that things like fresh air could really help in times of pandemic. In the 1920s, however, it really must have just felt like you were coming here to die. Now, wasn't that a cheery story, Dave, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, it's so scary. <laughs>
So if you know anything about the Fever Hospital or about any of the landmarks around here, as you can see, I'm still not entirely too sure on the history, the exact history of it. So please do drop it in the comments, tell me all about it. I'm actually making a documentary for the radio about the Lord Limerick Embankment and its history. So I'm also interested in getting talking to people who live in the area, maybe, or who have been walking the embankment over lockdown, maybe people who grew up here or people who are interested in the history. So please drop me a comment. One more warning is that if you're going to come down and investigate the embankment, first of all, wear good footwear because I wrecked my foot here last summer when I just wasn't watching. There's many big treacherous holes and plenty of divots to put your foot down into as well. The other warning is to check the tide times. Do not come down here when the tide is in or when it's due in because it's still quite a dangerous area without the proper facilities being built and so it's very easy to get trapped down here. But we're going to run for now because it's very cold. Hit subscribe for more fun and witchy adventures. I upload every Thursday. You're not going to want to miss it. Slán agus Goodbye and good luck to you. Ah!